If you explore a lot of various systems in Space Engine, you'll discover that many of them seem to have these really large planets very close to the main star, and these planets are often called hot Jupiters. They're basically supermassive, they're anywhere between the size of very large Earth to essentially several times the size of Jupiter. And so how come that many of these stars have these super giants very close to the star, but our solar system doesn't seem to have one? As a matter of fact, if I go to our solar system, you'll realize that except for Mercury right here, there is really nothing in between Mercury and the Sun. This is actually entirely empty. So what's going on? What actually happened here? Today we're going to talk about a theory that has been actually recently posted in one of the uh, science magazines, and we're going to discuss the possibility of it being true. Welcome to What The Math and enjoy this video. And the theory is actually really simple. So the scientists from um, University of Nevada proposed that at some point in the past, sometime uh, right after the solar system has actually been born and planets started to develop, there was actually a relatively large planet in between Mercury and the Sun, and it used to orbit right here. And as it was orbiting, it essentially collected all of the dust, all of the particles, all of the um, debris that was flying here, collected all of it into one large object, which became known as a super-Earth, basically a, a massive planet between 1 and 10 times the mass of Earth. And then, after many, many years, the Sun essentially absorbed it, and that is why now there is nothing here. Well, let's actually investigate this in a little bit more detail using the Inverse Sandbox 2 and try to see if it's actually possible to recreate this in that game as well. And now that we're in Universe Sandbox, let's explore this in a little bit more detail. So, we know that there is an asteroid field right here between Mars and Jupiter, and it's actually a lot larger than this. So there's a lot more rocks flying around. It's just here we have less of them because we don't want our game to be too slow. There's obviously another one um, behind Neptune, uh, or after Neptune. And uh, as a matter of fact, if you look at uh, the simulation that has all possible dwarf planets, you'll realize that there's a lot of stuff out there, specifically um, right after Neptune. There's a lot of different... Uh, large asteroids, there's a lot of different dwarf planets, but closer to the center, especially right after Mercury, there is really nothing. This is actually completely empty. There's not even uh, a single rock that has been detected, except for the occasional comet that flies past um, Mercury's orbit, but then it goes out in the outer solar system. So what's going on? Let's see if we can actually recreate this. So we're going to place the sun right here in the middle, and um, we're going to make a few rings with various stuff flying around the sun. And we're going to place them at a distance from, let's just say, about 75,000 kilometers to the maximum distance of um, Mercury, which would be about 0.38 astronomical units. So right around here. So there we go. There's our rings, um, a ring of different material, different asteroids, and different proto-material that used to exist around our early uh, sun. This is about 4.5, 4.6 billion years ago. And we're going to place a few more, actually. And let's make one of these as bodies instead of um, particles, just so we can have more stuff flying around here. And so this is what we have so far. There's uh, randomly generated moons here. And this was essentially the early solar system. Um, it obviously, ex this ring obviously extended a lot farther, but this is just the part uh, where the Mercury was. We can actually also place early Mercury here just to kind of simulate that as well. And the Mercury is around here somewhere. So it's right there. So it's about a distance of about 0.38 astronomical units. But um, even though early on this used to have a lot of material, there is nothing here now. There is material after Mercury, there's actually asteroids orbiting between Mercury and Mars, there's more stuff orbiting between Mars and Earth, and quite a lot of material orbiting Mar between Mars and Jupiter, but nothing here. So the possible explanation for all of this, and this is actually a really cool explanation in my, in my opinion, is that at some point in early history of our planet, there was actually a super-Earth, uh, so n nothing as big as um, a hot Jupiter, but a very, very large planet similar in size to this planet right here, Glias 80, um, 876d, or possibly the planet we've taken a look at previously called Corot 7b. So something that was above a mass of Earth, but below 10 masses of Earth, and this something was orbiting somewhere here, and it basically... Um, 
coalesced from all of these other protoplanets that were closer to the sun. And this planet was somewhere between Mercury and the sun. And at some point, because it was so close to the sun, um, well, first of all, it actually sucked in all of this material. It basically cleared out all of this material from the vicinity of here, of this, um, of this orbit. And you'll see this happening relatively quick as soon as I accelerate the game you'll notice that because of its mass, it's going to start kicking out all of these little particles out of here. Although, you know what? I think I'm going to remove these moons because they're actually really slowing down my game, unfortunately. So let's remove these moons first. And they're also making it a little bit more difficult to observe all of this. So we have Mercury and now we have Glies. So as, uh, let's, also let's rename this. I don't like the name Glies. Let's give it a different name. So what is as fast as Mercury, but even faster? I don't think there's anything like that, but we're gonna let's, let's name it Hermes. Hermes is the um, the equivalent of Mercury, but in uh, Greek mythology. And look at that. See how these rocks started flying out already? That's basically this planet causing the causing all, all of this material to either uh, get sucked into Hermes or to get kicked out into into the outer solar system. And as we keep running this for many 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 millions of years this will happen more and more and as it's doing this basically right here you'll notice that if i remove the orbits this area is getting emptier and emptier there's actually a ring form in there right now and um because it was so close to the sun this this uh protoplanet this hermes would slowly start drifting closer to the sun this is actually what happens to some planets that are um relatively close to a very massive object they will actually start slowly falling into this object unless they have a stable orbit and this protoplanet probably didn't have a stable orbit as a matter of fact it probably had a little bit more eccentricity as well and so if we increase all of this if we give it more eccentricity and start slowly moving it toward the sun you'll notice that it will essentially clear out all of this area. Now, we're not gonna be able to clear everything because you would need like millions of years of gameplay here to do all of that. Uh, but it probably is going to clear quite a lot. You'll notice that there's going to be quite a lot of these um, these protoplanets, these objects disappearing with time. And you can kind of see them flying out into, into the outer solar system. And this would also explain why some of these comets that we have today have such an eccentric orbit. Like, we have comets that come really close to the sun, but then they fly out into the outer solar system for many, many, many thousands, if not millions of years. And uh, one of the ways that these comets could have been born is if there was this massive object orbiting around the sun and then it basically because of its uh huge mass it would boost them or basically would give them what's called um a slingshot maneuver boost and they would essentially fly out into the outer solar system and have this very highly eccentric orbit because mercury would probably not be able to do that uh, but a massive object like a protoplanet that's technically a super earth something that's larger than earth would easily be able to do it and you can kind of see them right there on the outskirts. So these darker points, that's essentially these comets and asteroids that have acquired a much more eccentric orbit and will one day come back to the sun or possibly will just fly into the outer solar system to never be seen again. Now, if I do this over and over for, you know, literally thousands and millions of years, there will be nothing left here in the middle. In one of the previous videos where I was creating um, Earth from protoplanets, I actually kind of showed you if I run this for many hours, I will have nothing in the middle except for a very large and massive planet. And this is essentially what's happening here. We're going to just accelerate this a little bit and let it slowly come closer and closer to, to the sun. I'm going to move this closer and closer. And so what this theory suggests is that uh, something like 4.5, maybe 4.4 billion years ago, possibly even before our, our moon was formed, uh, this large super earth cleared this whole area of the debris and as it cleared it it basically sucked everything in or kicked it out and then essentially joined the sun so the sun essentially swallowed it and it became part of the sun and uh, this is what's going to happen in a few seconds here let's actually give it a little bit more eccentricity so we can clear a little bit more of this stuff and if i slow this down a little bit you'll notice that it's going to start kicking out stuff a little bit faster. There we go. There it goes. Look at all, all of these rocks flying out. 
usually if you run the game a little bit slower it will it will be able to calculate this more precisely and so this is what's essentially happening here so some of these rocks are combining with uh hermes and some of these rocks are flying out and are, are disappearing and look at look at what's happening here um what you're actually observing is the seasons so as it comes close to the sun it gets really hot as it moves away it gets a little bit cooler and then you also see the emissions and this is actually uh, the emissions of hydrogen that this planet is losing as it's coming closer and closer to the sun and you can kind of also see the water and, and uh, uh, silicates here changing from plasma and gas to liquid form. So there's a lot of different different changes going on. But anyway, so we're going to now uh, move this into the sun just to simulate what could have happened billions of years ago. So then it's combined with the sun. And we're going to combine this using the setting here. And once it essentially collides with the sun, well, first of all, nothing would really happen to, you know, our planet or anything like that. Oh, no, where, where are you going? <laughs> I accidentally flew away. No, come back, Hermes. You know what? That could have actually happened. And this is actually, I'm kind of happy this happened. So Hermes got kicked out of the um, inner solar system. And this kind of brings me to my next point. So the according to the calculation in this paper, the size of this planet or protoplanet could have been around 1 to 10 um, masses of Earth. And surprisingly, this is a similar mass that we think Planet 9 might be if it exists. If there's a Planet 9 somewhere on the outskirts of our solar system, it could be same size as this protoplanet that was orbiting and collecting material between Mercury and the Sun. And it didn't clear everything, as you can see, but that's because I didn't give it enough time. Uh, but it did clear quite a lot. A lot of these rocks have um, a more eccentric orbit or have actually left into the outer solar system. But what's really interesting is that, so you know what? What if this is how Planet 9 was actually born? And this kind of got me thinking. So maybe, just maybe... Um, for some reason, Hermes got kicked out into the outer solar system and stayed there because maybe it interacted with one of the other gas giants, like for example Neptune, that decreased it, its um, periapsis, or sorry, increased its periapsis and uh, made it stay on the outskirts of our solar system. Or possibly that's not what happened at all, because that, all of this is just a speculation, and we won't really have any hard proof until possibly sometime in the future when we are able to do a little bit of math and calculate all of this. But what I really wanted to show you in this video is essentially the theory behind how a lot of this material that used to be between Mercury and the Sun disappeared and why this whole area is actually completely clear and you know what this actually makes quite a lot of sense and would be a pretty good explanation for how not only uh solar systems form but also why for some unknown reason our solar system is unique in not having a very large and massive object such as a hot jupiter or a super earth close to the main star and to me this kind of makes sense what what about you does it make sense to you? Post it in the comments below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. And hopefully in this video, you learned something about universe and space. And hopefully now you know that there might have been a really awesome planet somewhere close to our sun that is no longer there or is possibly somewhere out there that we haven't found yet. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share and like this video. And also post a comment about what other theories do you know that we might be able to discuss in one of the future videos. Anyway, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate all of your support. And I'll see you in the next video where we'll talk about something else that is absolutely awesome. And before we finish this video, let's make our sun go supernova. And there you go. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. And somehow, for some unknown reason, I was able to create a black dwarf or a star that used to be a white dwarf but has cooled down so much that has now become completely dark and completely black. Here, the, its temperature is only about 3 degrees above absolute zero. And this is hypothetically what's going to happen to our sun trillions of years in the future. How I did this, I do not know. But that is absolutely awesome.